So this segment is about classes. So let's uh, go ahead and create some classes, instantiate those classes into objects, populate those classes with uh, members, whether they be methods or, or properties or fields or what have you. So our topic for this one will be about classes. So here we are, uh, beginning classes, and we'll be taking a look at objects, uh, methods in those classes, fields in those classes, properties, parameters for the methods. We'll talk a little bit about value types versus reference types, and we'll also talk about constructors inside of a class. So let's take a look at what that looks like in code. And so here we are in Visual Studio. We'll create a new project. And this will be a console application. It will be a demo of classes. And in this particular one, I'm going to use an example of a car as a, as a class. So I create that project. And so here we have a main, of course, as we would expect. And just like any main, we can put variables in here. So for example, we can create an integer, give that an initial value, and manipulate that. But what we'd like to do is create our own custom types. OK, so int is a type. A class is a, another sort of type. And so we're going to create our own custom types and then create uh, storage behind those types. So for example, I'll go up here to the project. And I will say, I right click and say add. And I could just say new item, or I can go down here to class. It's really up to you. And we'll select class. And I'm going to call this class car, or this file car. So by convention, if you, the name of the file is the same as the name of the class. It doesn't have to be, but it certainly makes sense. And in general, you only want to have one class in a given file, or one class definition. So I'll go ahead and add that. And that creates for us here this class car. And then we have to think about things that would go inside of the car. So what we need to do is we need to think about actions or activities, um, or otherwise known as verbs. In other words, things that a car might do. And in order to accomplish those actions, we're going to need some kind of data or some sort of storage so that we can manipulate the class based on the verbs that we have associated with it. So in other words, uh, just like uh, actions, activities, verbs, data, storage, or nouns associated with our class car. Okay, And it turns out that eventually those verbs will be what we call methods. And those that data, storage, or nouns will be our fields internally, but even more importantly, our properties. Okay, we'll talk about the details be about what a property is versus a method uh, and a field. But uh, essentially, uh, a method is the activities or actions or capabilities of the class. Uh, fields are the data, the, the things you can store about that class. And properties are sort of halfway between methods and fields. All right, so let's start with a simple method. So for example, what can a car do? Uh, you expect a car to be able to drive. So I'm going to create this method called drive. Okay. Um, now it doesn't work just to have the name there. You need a couple of things in front of it. And the first thing you need to put in front of it is the return type of this piece of code. Okay, so this is in other languages, for example, you might call this a function. Same basic idea. All right, so it doesn't return anything, so I'm going to say void. And then I'm going to mark this as a method by putting an empty set of parentheses after the name. That's basically how you tell something as a method versus a field. Okay. And then every method has a block statement after it, so I can add that. So at this point, let's go back to program. And just like we created that int, let's go ahead and try to create a car. So car is the data type. Um, and you'll notice that turns a, a slightly different color of uh, blue, that's sort of a periwinkle blue as opposed to the dark blue, the uh, keywords there. All right, uh, but the idea is that int and car are somehow on equivalent levels. They do similar things in that they are both data types of variables. So then we can create a variable of that class or type, and I'll call this one Pinto, okay, like so. Um, okay, so that creates in memory, or on the stack, I should say, 
a place for storing things. And so in other words, what we have at this point is a box out there. And its data type is car. And its identifier or name is Pinto, like so. Now, at that point, we can't do much with it, but uh, that gets us started. So in order to actually make use of this thing, this Pinto thing, you have to create a new object, or otherwise known as instantiation. So I say Pinto equals new car, empty parentheses, semicolon. Now, that particular Pinto, because we haven't given it much to do or be able to do, can't do much, but we can see it actually does have a couple of capabilities. If I type in Pinto and hit the dot, you can see already that I've got a number of uh, operations that are available to me. A little, a little light there, but it says equals get hash code, get type, and two string. Those are all things that are inherited from a class called object, which we will talk about later. But for right now, what we want to do is add our own capability to this uh, class so that Pinto can do a little bit more than what I can do now, which is nothing. All right, so let's go back to car. And I had uh, started to add this method called drive, which it, as it turns out right now doesn't do anything. And you'll notice that it does not show up on this list. So let's bring that list back. So car, the drive doesn't show up anywhere on this list. So we wanted to get it to show up. So how, what do we need to do? We'll go back to car. And it turns out that unless you specify otherwise, stuff inside of your classes is not available on the outside. So I'm going to specify otherwise, access specifiers. Here. And the two are public and private. Okay. Now, as you saw before, if I leave that out, it ends up being private. So in other words, private is the default. Unless you specify otherwise, you're going to get um, methods or fields or properties that are private. It's bad form, however, to just leave that keyword out. So it's much better to specify it. Uh, and in this case, we have to specify it or else that drive would not be public. Okay. Now, I've actually put this here. I need to move that over like so. Okay. So again, there's no code there. It doesn't actually do anything. But if we go back to program, and bring that list back up. Now you see there is a drive method specified there. So we could actually call that from Pinto. And so let's go ahead and do that. And it looks like that. So this doesn't actually do anything uh, because we haven't written any code inside of drive. But eventually we would be able to, you know, add code there and have it do stuff. So let's let's start off by doing something along these lines. Let's say console.write line. I'm driving, just to kind of give us some indication that something has happened. All right, so then we'll go ahead and run this. And there you see our results. So we've got this output statement that was executed as a result of calling pinto.drive. Okay. All right, so what we actually did there, let me go back to program here. So in program, I did this pinto equals new car. And that is in terms of what was happening in code is the following. So there's my picture. And then what we're going to do by saying new car is we're going to create some storage out here. And I'll put the hash in the middle of the box indicating that it could be complex storage. Right now, there's not much going on with car. It's pretty simple. But conceptually, there could be a lot of things inside of that class. And then this connection is made. In other words, there's uh, some, so, some sort of reference or pointer that allows the, uh, the variable Pinto to be connected with this storage. And this, that storage was created by using the new keyword. And that's when that took place. So now it's up to us to, to go back and sort of flesh that out a little bit, which is to say, put some actual code uh, or you know, something more than just, you know, I'm driving. We want to be able to do more with that. But in any case, this is a method. And in particular, it's a public method with no parameters. We'll talk about parameters in just a bit. But basically what I'm saying there is that the parentheses are empty. There's nothing inside of there. So when you go to call drive 
as you can see here. You don't pass it in the information inside of the parentheses. So they're basically at this point just a marker telling me that that is a method. But as I said, that isn't too much information as far as it just says I'm driving. So we've done the first part, which is to say we've added an activity or an action in the form of a method.